In my quest to create a user-friendly workshop, I thought I'd have a crack at building the flip cart. So let's see how this thing turns out. I had some old marine ply hanging around, so it got cut up into manageable pieces with the track saw, then the table saw for final dimensioning. Starting with the tabletop, as this is where all the action takes place, the top, bottom and sides were cut. Dropped on the cross cut sled, trimmed the sides to length and cut up several blocks that will support the main shaft. A hole saw ended up being a perfect snug fit for the water pipe that I was using as a shaft and it is readily available at most hardware stores. All the components were laid out to see if all is good. Positions marked out for pocket holes, then a bunch of drilling took place. Using glue, screws and some fancy right angle clamps and lots of pre-drilling, the shaft support was assembled. The sides got glued, clamped and screwed into place. The main shaft support was put in, lined up with the shaft and fixed into position. I wanted a removable top to give me full access for the electrics and the thought of having my mitre saw hanging upside down, I drilled and countersunk way too many holes so as to screw the top down later. The shaft was marked to length, cut and cleaned up. I wanted to use bearings as to give some kind of accuracy as to line up the mitre saw and planer to the in and out feed tables. The shaft had to be turned down so the bearing would fit. Even though I have access to a lathe, I realise not everybody does. It may look a little barbaric, however, turning the shaft on a bench grinder, cleaning up with some emery cloth, gave a surprisingly good fit. In the end, it was well and truly good enough for a flip cart. Obviously, if you have the lathe, go for it. A block gets glued in so the T-piece doesn't turn as you do up the pipe. The shaft knocked into place, all tightened up, and a retaining screw put in at each end. A lot of laminating of small blocks took place. This one was for the pillow bearing housing that was glued and then cleaned up. Gotta love that high tech router table. Marked out where I wanted the bearing block to be mounted, routed out a recess for strength, then glued and screwed the block into place. It was time to chuck the bottom of the card on. From this point in time, all is countersunk, glued and screwed together. Some blocks were glued and brad nailed for the casters and now I had a spoony thing to play with for a while. Tapping the bearing on and locking the collar in place and dropping the tabletop onto the cart. After centering the tabletop, I marked, drilled and secured it with some lag bolts. Like a budgie, I could watch this thing spin around for the rest of the day. Mounting a stop block to the side of the table and the other to the diagonal corner, these right angle clamps and some playing cards were used as shims to get the table parallel to the sides. Then I could clamp the four locating blocks on and fix them into place. I found that by mounting these blocks on opposing sides, it gave greater stability. I wanted a user-friendly locking system, deciding to use two spring-loaded bolts as a catch. A taper block was made, some flat steel bar formed around the edge, drilled, countersunk and screwed on. A hole drilled in the centre to accept the diameter of the latch. The striker plate block was clamped on, the spring bolts fastened and the tabletop was able to be flipped back and forth locking into position. Then the block fixed to its permanent home. Using my stomach as a third hand, I plonked on the mitre saw and marked the hole positions. Added some extra support on from underneath, drilled a hole and drove in a T-nut. The same was done for the thicknesser on the other side. Having a different bed height on the thicknesser, some spacer blocks were needed. Plonked on the thicknesser, bolted it down and took it for its first spin. 
Now that all the gear was bolted on, I could work out where some much needed gussets were needed. Marked them out, profiled at the bandsaw, and then I procrastinated for half a day whether to install them on the inside or the outside of the frame. After I won that debate with myself, I glued and screwed them into place. It was back to the table saw to cut out all the components for the in and out feed table wings. With glue and brads, a hinge support was added to beef things up. Attaching piano hinge onto another support piece, I found it easier to put this in place and pre-screw it to the side of the car. Place a straight edge across the mitre saw to get the exact measurement of the height needed. Simple box construction was used for the wings then the hinge support attached. With the aid of a roller stand, I could sit the wings on and screw them back into place. Now I could turn my attention to the wing supports. For some reason, we all tried to make these look aerodynamic. Extra support was whacked on for the hinge and a block for the set screw. A hole drilled to accept the bolt the profile of the nut chiselled out, some snotty goop mixed up, and the nut driven home. Then the piano hinge put into place. The wing supports were screwed in place. Then someone realised they forgot the centre cross brace to locate the said screw. That was knocked up with a recess put in to locate the support. Not wanting to remove the wings again, a little bit of difficult overhead work took place to install them, but in the end, all turned out fine. Flipping the table over and having all the bed heights match up and being level made someone feel like a world-class engineer for about three minutes until he made his next mistake, which magically this camera doesn't seem to pick up. At this stage, I decided to work on part of the electrics. A hole was bored to accept the plug top. A cover was needed, so a disc was made using a larger hole saw. Then the centre bored out to suit a rubber grommet. The disc got split in half and a slit put in the grommet. I didn't want to remove the plug top and rewire it, so this is why I took this approach. Now the lead could be dropped in, the grommet put on and one half of the disc screwed in place. The other half of the disc could be squeezed together and fixed down. Hopefully, this will keep all that unwanted dust out. With a guide and a router, a trench was formed to accept some T-track for a stop for the mitre saw. As I was stripping everything down for finishing, I still wasn't happy with the structural integrity of the cart, so I added one more central gusset and all was good. All the holes and voids got filled, panels flush trimmed, edges rounded over, and a ton of sanding we all love to do. All the working surfaces got multiple coats of a water-based poly, and the rest got sprayed to match my other shop furniture. After all the jam had dried, it was time to reassemble everything. If you're thinking about building your own, I hope this gives you some ideas and at least inspires you to take on your own project. This was my first attempt and I'm glad I took the plunge. Things were starting to come together as I bolted down the planar thicknesser for the last time and dropped the plug in. Now with the table flipped, I fed some wire through the T-piece and pipe and out the side of the car taped on the electrical cable to the wire and fed it through. The power point got wired up and the planer plugged in. At the other end of the cable, a new plug top was installed. I had to sit the miter saw to the side and place the table top on, drop the plug through and make sure that it was turned on before putting in way too many screws. The thought of having my saw hanging upside down got the better of me. I am really happy with my build. The ease at which I can locate the cart wherever I want it, deploy the wings either for the support when using the mitre saw, 
having an in and out feed table when planing, the one long extension lead, user friendly locking system and a fancy looking stop. I tried to keep my videos short and sweet so you don't stay up late watching YouTube all night so you can get out there and give it a crack. Leave us a comment, jump on board if you wish and until next time get out there and make and create.